Hey guys, it's Omer from Emos.com and I'm doing a quick first impressions gameplay video for Smite Tactics. A free to play a collectible card game developed and published by High Res Studios. I'll spend about 10 to 15 minutes on the ground checking this game out, make some comments. If you guys want to play uh, Smite Tactics or just learn more about it, do check out the full review on Emos.com on the link below. So let's go to get started. We have this chick leaning over and she's looking at something going on in the background. But I'm going to show you some of the core gameplay elements and differentiators of Smite Tactics before I jump into a real game. Uh, decks are about 20 cards, or exactly 20 cards each. And you can see all the current leader cards in the game. Uh, they're basically three factions, uh, Greek, Norse, and Egyptian. And each of those have their own set of cards. Uh, you can't use Norse cards with Greek decks. And you can't use Norse gods when you're picking a Greek character, for example. Ra, for example, can only use Egyptian stuff. Zeus, of course, is going to be using Greek stuff. Odin is going to be uh, Norse along with Freya. So that's kind of your factions in the game, the way you kind of build your deck. There are, of course, neutral cards as well, the same way there is in Shadowverse, Hearthstone, and pretty much any of these uh, style games. But oddly, there's 20 cards in a deck, which seems kind of small, but it does seem to work all right. You can see all my cards right now. But anyway, let's go jump into a game. This is currently in alpha. I should mention that as well. And in order to get into the game, you do need an invite. so it's Or, or you can buy the game and then you get right in. But it'll be free to play when it comes out. And there's a campaign mode as well, which you can complete to learn uh, to unlock new cards for free. No rank mode just yet. And we're going to play as... Let's go with our this guy. Let's go Norse. You have three decks that you start with. And as you as you play the game, of course, you can unlock new cards by completing the... the the uh, single player missions and just shopping in the store, playing against other people, and the game has like daily quests and stuff as well. Pretty much every one of these kind of games do have those. Also worth mentioning too, as you can clearly see, we're not playing on a tr traditional board. It is a bit more like Duelist in that you're playing on a board with your character, and the way you place your characters and move them is of strategic importance. There's, so there's an extra layer of depth to the game. Uh, we obviously don't want these five drops. We'll keep our fire imp, even though I'm not gonna be. Able, let's see what we, can, what we can do with him. I start on the right side, and my guy can move and attack on the same turn. If I kill the enemy's uh, leader, I win the game. And different leaders have different abilities as well. So my leader, uh, Odin, if I spend two mana, I can give a friendly unit plus one, plus one at the end of the turn. So he gets to go first. He's ranged. I'm not. So he ran up and smacked me. And because he's ranged, I couldn't counterattack. By default, if you get attacked, you can counterattack if you are able. So we're going to go run up to him. And let's see what I can do. I can drop the Cursed Warrior. I have two. I can smack him for four damage, five damage with both these Fire Imps. And that, that might not be a bad idea. Oh man, we can smack him hard for big deeps. But we let's do. Uh, let's drop these first. Let's go drop two of these guys. And then they come into play with like Summoning Sickness if you played Magic and same in Hearthstone. They can't attack the turn they come out unless it's uh, unless they have charge. So actually, let's just go full YOLO. We're going to use our Mana Potion to get the extra mana for going second. And let's drop these guys as well. So we dropped a lot of dudes. So let's smack him. And these guys, I'm going to smack him as well. They will counterattack though. As you can see, he does swing back. And then our turn is done. If, for example, a ranged enemy hits me or any of my heroes, these two guys, because they're not ranged, they will not counterattack. And, of course, where you place units and how you move them around and... You know, it plays a great deal of importance to the game. So I would say it's right away a little bit more complex than stuff like Hearthstone and Shadowverse. Both great games, might I add. But oddly, uh, oddly uh, Shadowverse has 40 card decks. Hearthstone has 30 card decks. So he moved back to attack because if he attacked me from melee range, my guys would have countered back. So a pretty basic mechanic there. But when you start getting more units on the board, it can start getting more complex. Because you have to kind of pay attention to movements and stuff like that as well. Though they can move like a shit ton of tiles anyway. So it's not a huge restriction. So my turn now. He's got no cards on the field. We're going to go ahead and move up. And you can only place units uh, adjacent to your, your main leader. So we still have... Let's see what I can drop. Uh, I can drop this guy for two of these Cursed Hunters. Or I can drop... Let's just drop this guy, our Elder Harpy. Let's go ahead and do that. He's got a move called Pardon. It means he cannot be counterattacked. So if I smack this guy, he's not going to smack me back. And I think that's all we got this turn. He's got a lot more cards in his hand, so he might be dropping some uh, higher cards, higher cost cards. Uh, there are also god cards. There's minions, spell cards, and god cards, essentially. Uh, god cards are, you can't have more than one of the same god out. And gods are different from leaders. You can lose your gods, and everything is K. Okay. But the cool thing about god cards is they actually have abilities. And they're a bit stronger sometimes, but his ability, it counts as an attack. So instead of attacking, well, with this guy, it's a bit of both. His ability is he gains plus one, plus zero for every enemy adjacent to him, and then he can attack. But certain cards can do like AoE damage, AoE heal, and that, that takes that takes their action turn. So you can move and attack, but you can move and then use an ability as well. So Fate, deal two, deal two damage to up to two random enemies. Talk about RNG, right? 
So let's see what we can play. I think it might be to play to put this guy down. He killed my other dude though. The cool, this guy is uh, melee. So with this best set card, you can deploy three one one cat charges rut row. For this guy, we can actually if we shoot him from a distance, he won't be able to fight back. So paying attention to that is of importance. But let's just drop our four drop for now. Actually, let's just go a little bit closer first. Let's go put him. Um, he gains damage for adjacent enemies, so we'll put him here. And then my guy will go over here. Let's go surround him. Let's give him that nice little smackerino. He can't attack this turn, so our turn is done. This campaign just have to learn the game as well. But the cool thing that I like is that each of the factions, if you're playing Norse, you can play multiple different leaders, and they have different HPs and different abilities. So it's not like Hearthstone or Shadowverse where everyone starts with the same HP, essentially. Here, it's, it is a little bit different. And they'll be adding more factions eventually. Right now, again, uh, the only... Pantheons are Greek, Norse, and Egyptian. They might add some more stuff later to mix it up. But those are essentially three different kinds of decks you can build as of the game's alpha. So he, this guy's ability, he summoned f uh, three of these cats with one, one one cats with charge. That's a really good card. Man, I gave him the smack. This guy's a 4-4. Four, four. He's beast. So he's going to kill all of these. But then he's going to smack me, maybe? But if he smacks me, he's going to take four damage. Never mind, this guy hit me for... Uh, this guy hit me for, what, what hit me for two that turn? Let's see. Oh, he used Sunder on me, one of his cards. So when they play their cards, it's not always obvious what happened, but he did use an ability to kill me. Alright, this game is looking rough. Uh, we had a pretty good rush start, but we couldn't finish him off. He still has 12 HP. We are we are in mega trouble, boys. I can summon Ymir. He's a 4-6. Really awesome ability. Alright, what can we we can we can kill this guy, I guess. Uh, that might be the play. Hmm. Well, first let's go here and we'll summon. We should use this too. Actually, we we might as well. We can summon two range guys too. They're not bad. Or we can pray for the RNG Jesus. And no, it won't help me regardless. So we're gonna play Ymir and see what happens. We'll put him down over here. My hero's got HP. He can tank. And we'll smack this guy. And our turn is done for now. Our next turn, we'll do two damage to two random enemies. And we'll smack for four. Oh my god, he used execute. Okay, so that killed one of my non leader cards. I am totally boned. He's got three cards left in his hand. I got one. Rest of pepperoni, me. We might be donezo. And by might be donezo, I mean most most definitely donezo. There are cool cards like this. Like, you get an additional Cursed Hunter. So you can play two cards for one of the same card, obviously. But you need other cards to synergize with it. Like, stuff that can boost your character's uh, stuff. I think the play is we surrender this round and we do another one. Because we got, we got dumpstered on this one. Next one's going to be a win, though. But the core gameplay is pretty fun. I'm curious to see how they're going to balance. Um, like, There's a lot of intricacies to the game on movement and placements and stuff like that. And it, it is a little more complex. So the learning curve is going to be a little bit a uh, little bit higher than stuff like Shadowverse and Hearthstone. But it also introduces a lot more tactical elements. Though it's not innovative in that regard because Duelist did it before. And I'm sure other games have done it before that as well. And let's go get a new pack right now. We can buy a pack with our favorite points. You get favorite points by doing dailies and whatnot. So we get a new pack. Let's go and open this bad boy and see what we get. Give me those legendaries. Oh yeah, here we go. And I don't even know which one's legendary or not. If there's any legendaries in here. I think he's my rare. These two are rare because they're kind of glowing. Uh, the, the effects in the game aren't really great yet either. But again, it is an alpha and they're going to polish it up probably a lot more later. But let's go jump into another versus game. And we'll play as... Zeus has range. Let's go with... Um, Let's rock the Zeus this time and see what happens. And these these are all pre-made decks. You, you start with three of them. So enough to kind of, you know, feel the game out before you start committing to which of the pantheons you want to go with. And again, you can, so there are neutral cards between all of them. And then, you know, basically uh, pantheon specific, whether it's Egyptian, Norse, or uh, Greek. So the gods are kind of cool too because uh, you can only have one god on the field at once. And gods are those, uh, any basically any of those cards with abilities. And if you play a second one, it just heals your current one. So there's strategy there as well. If you want to have multiple of the same god in your deck. But 20 card, twenty cards for a deck does seem a bit odd for some reason. It's That's a very few cards. Obviously, it's no like uh, Clash Royale with 8 or something. But it does seem a little bit odd. But I haven't played enough games of Smite Tactics to really get a feel for it yet. I've played a lot of Hearthstone and a lot of Shadowverse. I have hundreds of hours under my belt for, uh, for Hearthstone for sure. If not many hundreds. Maybe like... 50 or so with Shadowverse. So not as much there. Searching for match, and here we go. Uh, Q is again a little bit slower right now because the game isn't out yet. Alright, we got Fire Imps. These are not bad, but they're 
two ones. I, I kind of screwed up last time. I, I played quite noobly because you, you don't want to suicide with the fire amps because you can give them plus one plus one for my ability, my leader ability, which I didn't do. So that was that was a problem because if they can survive that first attack, they're so much more useful. So we get to go first. We'll go up here and then give him give him that lightning D. There you go. Take that damage. He's got range too, so he returns fire anyway. I have a fire amp and a basilisk. I might as well put the basilisk down. Uh, he might be able to smack it though, so maybe yo, we'll put it down anyway. And I'll end my turn. I went first, so he gets the the coin in the game. Here they call it a mana elixir, and the way the mana works is very similar to Hearthstone, where you get one every single turn. I know Feria does that as well. I think a lot of card games may have uh, uh, lifted that from Hearthstone. But I'm not sure if Hearthstone was the first. Probably not, actually. There's probably a lot of obscure card games that came out well before then. Obviously, Hearthstone was not the first digital card game. But it did make the genre very popular and very big. And that's why pretty much everyone and their mother is making these uh, collectible card games online. Alright, so let's, let's go a little further up so we can summon a bit closer to him. Uh, there are taunt cards, which are super useful. Uh, we're going to drop it right in front of him. And now that he's being taunted, he cannot move out of the way. He has to actually attack our guy. And when he's taunted, he can't use his ability either. So I have no more mana. This guy, oh, if I hit him with this, he's going to die. But uh, uh, YOLO, let's smack him. Give him that two deeps. He could have moved anyway, so I probably should not have played that. But it's all right. This fire amp card is actually really good with my other uh, deck. Because my ability, again, for two mana, I could have given a card plus one, plus one until the start of my next turn. So this guy could have dropped him, hit him for three. And in the counterattack process, he wouldn't have died. And that would have been much, much smarter. Oh man, he dropped a 6-4. Holy crap. And he's got Pardon, so he can't be counterattacked. Alright, this guy's gonna give me some issues. That is a 6 drop. Holy crap. How do you get all that mana? What do you do to get that mana? Uh, he used Minion Recruiter. Spawn a random minion from your opponent's deck. What? For 3 mana? Oh my god, the RNG. You know, people complain about RNG and Hearthstone. For 3 mana, he could grab a ridiculously high mana cost card, and he did. Alright, I guess we can drop this. There's not much else we can drop. Uh, let's let's get this guy moving over here. We'll get him to smack this guy. We'll drop him over here. And my god, this is going to be near impossible. Oh my god, what can I do? I can smack that. Hit me back for one. He's going to hit me for six next turn. Six mana. That is rough. I could drop this as well, but there's two more damage. I can drop this anytime almost because it's got charge. So we'll see what he does. He's going to hit me and kill my taunt. He's got to kill the taunt. But he might be able to play something else too. But uh, we are in trouble. His ability spends two mana to restore health. So rest in pepperoni. My guy, he just gave it that uh, that sunder. Man, he RNG god. What can I do? He got a six drop in on like turn four. That is nuts. And he can kill me like in three turns, this guy. Let's see what Athena can do when we get her out. He's got taunt. She can teleport. And we got Bronte's Divinity. So whenever you play a god, he gets his Divinity Trigger. So that's a unique mechanic uh, to Smite Tactics. But this is going to be rough. I mean, we need the damage. It's a 3-3. Three, three. It's not bad. But he's going to get destroyed. I mean, we can we can drop... Uh... Alright, you know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do... We're going to draw. So we click 2 to use our ability. And let's see what, what we, got. we got. We got Fury. We are in trouble, though. We'll drop this over here. Might as well put this over here. We'll smack his hero. Uh, we can't smack his hero because we used our ability. The core mechanics are pretty fun though. And uh, because it is high res, I'm confident that they'll do a pretty good job. They got a lot of money from Smite. and uh, So I think they're going to do a pretty decent job with this one. Uh, rest in pepperoni, my guy. So how'd that die without doing anything else? Oh, he killed me with his Elder Harpy and he can't be counterattacked. That is annoying. Time to limber up. And I forgot he had one out already. So, I, I was probably going to lose anyway. I'm going to take a 9, 10. I am 100% dead. Have, having a 6 drop in like turn 3 with that card totally ruined, uh, destroyed me. So, I am totally done, though. I mean, I have a, I can drop a taunt. Uh, let's see. I think I can live another turn at least. So, let's move our guy over here. And let's, let's throw some lightning bolts at him. And yeah, let's drop our taunt. All right, let's drop our taunt and see what happens. If I could play this card in the same turn, that would be great. It doubles a non-leader friendly's health unit health. So you'd have 14 health if I could play that this turn. But alas, I cannot. He's going to kill it. For, he's going to smack it for six. 
and then one more for seven, and then hit me for three. So honestly, there's no point of continuing this game either. We have no chance. Him getting that six drop was absolutely absurd. Talk about RNG. Rest in pepperoni me. I mean, I got the basics down. The first game I could have played better. This game I got RNG'd. The third one is a charm. We're gonna win that one. Actually, we're already at 15 minutes. So I wanna look at some of the cards and then probably quickly call it. So, damn, I suck. Lost twice in a row. But uh, if I had to guess when this game was going to come out, I'd say probably summer of this year, summer of 2017. Though I don't think there's any release date out there just yet. You do have those daily quests, you know, you play as certain factions, you win a certain number of games, and you, you get extra, you know, currency in game uh, influence. You can see your collection over here again, too. You can, you know, you can disenchant your extra cards and whatnot to craft new cards. All of that is very similar to Faria and Hearthstone. But if you like these style games, I say give it a try. It is a mix of, I guess, Hearthstone meets Duelist. Mostly very similar to Duelist, though. But anyway, guys, uh, Smite Tactics. Check it out. Anyway, guys, later.